Okay, picking up from where we left off, we're getting somewhere now. We've got our form layout. We've got a few entries here, somewhat formatted. I'd still like to bring the website URL down the line. Maybe we should make that a link. Um, so, and these text boxes are a bit wide here. And also, it'd be nice maybe to have a WYSIWYG editor here uh, for rich text. So let's try and do some of those things. First, we'll go back to Visual Studio. We wanted to put our website URL on a new line, so we're going to grab this class that is specific to the website URL. We're going to go to our CSS, and we'll say that we want it to also be a block. So we can just use the same rule, but just put a comma and have a different class. So now if we do that, and then uh, the other thing is we want to look at our text boxes. We've got this very wide text box for the name. Let's say uh, normal text box for the name. Let's say, maybe, well, we might want wide. We could try normal and see how it goes. And let's see for the location. Maybe we'll let that be wide. For the website, we're a little wide, but not very wide. And we'll come back to this comment because we're going to use a WYSIWYG editor. But again, we make changes here, so we have to build the project. And then we have to go back to the browser and refresh the page. And there, our name is smaller, email smaller, location. Um, and you can see our website URL is on a new line. Now, another thing we might want, we mentioned we want to make that a link. So let's go back to Visual Studio. And again, in our results here, basically we just want to make this into a anchor tag with a link. And we want to see the quote there. And I'm going to put this rel equals uh, no follow. A lot of times spammers will come and put comments on your site just to get a link to try to improve their search engine rank. We put this into the URL, but we want the same thing for the actual text of the link. So duplicate that. And we said we wanted to do the WYSIWYG editor. So the first thing we need to do is make sure we have a reference to mojoportal.web.editor. So we'll add a reference. Choose projects. We'll add that editor reference there. And we should already have in our web.config the control declarations so that it will know what the editor is. Now, I can just easily uh, copy an editor from an existing feature, but let's just go ahead and try with, if we can find, here it is. Okay, so we're going to use that instead of this comment box here. And because of the way the editor layout lays out, we may want to put that in a div to make sure that it falls below that label. We even put the class setting row on there, and that will help make sure of it as well. Now, using the editor takes a little bit of extra work. In the on init, we want to do site details dot up editor, and we pass in add content comment and basically it's because we support multiple editors and we have different providers for each editor and so this wraps up to make sure the right provider is used. And it has to happen before page load so we, we put it in on init. Now there are other things we want to do with this editor too so we'll go down in our settings and comment has an internal property web editor the toolbar and we don't want it to have a very uh, powerful toolbar because this is strangers coming to our site and we also want to maybe specify height well, we'll try with just a height and the width will hopefully just be 100% of its width in the um, field set so let's see and then uh, we want to go ahead and change to where it's add comment dot text and that should do it we need to rebuild real quick and then we need to refresh the browser hopefully we didn't break anything and there we have the editor it still looks a little big tall or something it seems like our button is kind of so basically the thing i was doing wrong is i was setting this height on the editor but really we have to go to the inner editor because there's kind of an outer container that contains our editor and we're using a provider model to load which one. So I was just setting the wrong property. I needed to set it on the editor itself, on the internal editor of the editor wrapper control. Now we have, you know, WYSIWYG on here. Let's just make sure everything's still working. 
corner. And we'll submit. And there we have it. Blah, blah, blah. Who from Fooville. So we're still working. We're now using the WYSIWYG editor. Now, one other problem is that, you know, strangers can come along and submit this, or even automated web bots. And they could try to submit a lot of spam, and we want to kind of try to prevent that. So it would be recommended to use what's known as a CAPTCHA. It's a computer-assisted something Turing test. It's, you know, try to prove you're human. Um, so we have some of that in Mojo Portal, and we can go back to our code and add another CAPTCHA here. Let's see, maybe it should be in a list item above our button, and CAPTCHA control. remember how we initialize the provider for that because we have several different ones. So just to refresh my memory, I'm going to go look in the blog comment page where I know we're using CAPTCHA. Blog view control. Here it is. We do. We set the provider name. Site settings. So in our code, we just do that. And we'll build again, and we'll make sure it's showing up on the page. And if we try to submit, actually do anything right now. Um, one thing is when you're going to use something like the CAPTCHA, it is basically a validator control. So you're going to say page.validate. If not, page dot is valid and we don't want to do anything we can just select the uh, validation message show and let's see there's probably other things like you know oh yeah there's some more stuff here that had to be done that we didn't do so come back here to our settings and we want this to just be the site settings. And that's a special case capture, that recapture. Has to be treated a little differently. We'll refresh the page. And let's see if we try to submit. It's not giving us a warning, but it doesn't seem to be submitting. So take a little break there and figured out what I was doing wrong. Um, Originally, I had this validation down here in the save method, which was being called by the button click. And even though we were returning down here, it was still continuing to execute this redirect logic. So I just moved the validation up into the button click event where it really should be. I also enabled view state on the page. Uh, this is needed when you have events in a page. She is a bit in .NET 4, but we're not moving to .NET 4 yet, so we'll talk about that later. But in any case, um, now, if I just try to submit the form, it does tell you incorrect. So, let's go ahead and refresh the page. And let's just try again. Just the kind of comments you want in your guestbook, huh? There we go. And now, well, let's make a mistake here. And incorrect, try again. But this time, we didn't lose our information. So we can go ahead and correct it. And we'll submit. And now there it is. We have uh, this entry. It seems like we have a strange random sort going on here. So we'll have to look at our stored procedure and maybe we don't have an order by a clause. I'll end this clip here because I'm afraid we're already hitting the 10 minute mark. Next video I will try to show you will make it a setting where you can enable or disable the capture that I think mostly you would always want that to be there and we'll take a look at the sort. Thanks for listening. We'll see you in the next clip.